do another performance review video where I go over the analytics behind the videos that did really well, that did really bad, try to explain you what is going on for you to understand how YouTube might work, how content creation might work, specifically for anime reactions. Now, is there anything that really stands out? Um, a lot of these videos will take like at least like two to three days for a lot of the actual data to be processed and for it to make sense. But this video right here, 21 hours ago, yet so many views. Why? Well, this is an exception where it's like a trend, right? This is like a crazy trend happening. There is a re-zero break time that is basically just dropping huge bombs. The community is just going crazy. People are livid. And of course, there's not many other people even doing re-zero break time reactions. I'm like pretty much the only person doing it. So it makes sense why the demand is there. Supply is low. Views are high. But this data, right, it doesn't really show up. So it's kind of a... Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I want to see, right? The audience type, as well as the amount of like revenue, RPM, meaning, you know, money made per thousand views. Stuff like that doesn't get shown until like a couple days later, but basically, break time. Shit's popping off. And as you can see, the search engine does not matter. Most of the viewership is always through. Well, a decent amount is actually through that. Is there a keyword? Nah. This stuff like YouTube search terms, like stuff like that, not enough data to suggest to report. This is what I mean. You need to wait like two to three days for it to actually fill out, but makes sense why it would do so well. Next. Mm. Yo, Loki, what the fuck is this video? Why did this get 3.1k views? I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry, but the memes there were trash. The memes weren't even season three content. Yeah, people watch this. Like, like, I actually thought that the memes were so mid. But it got a lot of views because I guess this kind of format, it's kind of like meme shit, meme reviews. People enjoy it, even if it may be mid. Again, I don't think there's enough, you know, data points to tell me more stuff about this. But, uh, but yeah. Next up. Mm, these are all pretty standard. After a day... It seems like the baseline viewership is around two to three thousand, which is pretty good. I'm also very um, excited that the extra total content is doing well. Aeon of Horus makes total content that has more information to kind of fill in the gaps because the anime does a shit job and pretty much expects you to understand the light novel. And usually, I tried this with SAO, SAO cut content, like. I try to farm more in depth. Like, you know how we're doing for ReZero? Because it makes sense. People want to actually watch that shit. But when I did that for SAO, there was like little to no demand for it. So I was kind of worried that, ah, uh, it'd be unfortunate if we're not able to cover, you know, total content, extra content. But the viewership is there. Twaru is actually popping off. So it's it's nice. If we look at here, um, all through recommendations as usual. Let's look at the reach. All through browse features, yep. No one, you know, searching for the YouTube search engine. Everyone just finding me through my name. Let's look at the audience. This is the stuff I want to see, right? I want to see if there's new viewers coming in. But if we see a split of like roughly 50-50, then it's just existing community members, which is fantastic. So we're cooking. There's going to be more extra total stuff that we can, you know, cover. I don't mind subtle, slight spoilers. Of course, due to the nature of his content, we may get spoiled on stuff. But I'm willing to tank it since this show is just so... Uh, it's hard to understand if you haven't really read the light novel. 2.3Ks after one day, again, pretty damn good. This, though, it's looking like um, people like grief sold more than yapping. Now, let's look at that. And I also want you to take a note of this. Look at this video, Thomas Power Unleashed Imagine Breaker. This is an index video, right? Versus Strange Grief. Do you notice the difference in the likes, yet there is a roughly same amount of viewership? Is there anyone smart enough in class that actually fucking pays attention to what I say that can theorize why there is a difference in likes, yet there's the same viewership? Anybody? It's pretty obvious. Honestly, the first thing you have to do is just say, like, what kind of series is this? And that'll pretty much answer itself. It's a community series. Community versus weekly. That is not how you spell weekly, my man, but you got the point. Even though the viewership are the same, right? Let's look at these side by side. There's a lot more tourists checking out the weekly seasonal anime, right? Because, you know, it's trending. People are seeking out that content. 
Index is not a trending content. Twaddle no Index, this shit has been... It's an old fucking anime. But because my audience specifically wants it and they ask for it, of course there's going to be more engagement through the likes despite the views being the same, right? New people coming in, they're not going to like the video. They have no clue who you are. They're just kind of getting used to you. And they're like, okay, this guy's video is interesting. Let's see the next one. And maybe later on a week or maybe a month later, they'll actually become community members, right? Think about the different types of audience you have. Views are up 33%. This is great. Fantastic. I'm so happy that Toru is doing this well. And same with Strange Grief. Fantastic. The amount of money though, obviously we make more here. So this is a really good example of like, even though you have the same views, right? Even though you have the same views of 4,000, there is more money made through Toru than Strange Grief. Why is that? Because of the watch time. Why is there more watch time? It's not necessarily because this is 26 minutes and this is 31 minutes. No, I bet that if this is also a 30 minute video, it would not change much. It's because again, tourists aren't willing to watch your entire video. They're willing to watch just specific sections. That's why the revenue is lower. The longer you watch, the more ads you're served. In this scenario, right? Toru. Obviously, people are sticking around to watch the entire thing because the type of people watching these videos are much more loyal audiences that sits down and listens to my entire rambling. If you look at the engagement bar, look at this shit, right? Way higher here. If we look at the engagement bar down here, it's probably not going to have that kind of spike, right? Not sure if you can really visualize this, but if you kind of... If you take the average of the area, right? You, you, you know, this, this shaded an area, right? Versus like this shaded an area. If you took the average of those, obviously this is going to be more. Therefore, there's more watch time here. 670 versus 613. And therefore the difference of <laughs> not that much money, to be honest. <laughs> Just fucking $2. But I'm trying to tell you that views are not everything on YouTube. Views, honestly, don't matter as much as watch time. Because the more watch time there is, means people watch for longer. The more ads they're served, more mid-roll revenue being made. Let's look at the revenue chart, though. Or boom, let's see the RPM. $3.41. This is pretty good. Um, usually, and, and it fluctuates. The RPM again, the dollar amount per 1,000 views. We were kind of hard stuck at like $1 to $2 for a while. Now it's being like two to three, and now it's actually getting into three to four range. If we look here, 279. And why is that the case? Well, it's 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 like RPM is also there's, there's many different factors that contributes towards it, right? Like the dem, like the demographic of the audience. Are they young kids? Are they businessmen? Which area do they live in? Is it a place where the currency is stronger? There's a lot of different things that kind of contributes to this value being made. But I think that it's also taking into account the overall like watch time. Therefore, even though it's 4,000 views, more watch time, more money being made. So this is coming come with, with this number. 279 is kind of more appropriate for my average videos. But again, these are tourists. So obviously you're going to be making less money since they're going to be watching not through the entire thing. But pretty good examples of similar, like same views, but different types of audiences. Same views, but different types of audiences. This stuff is still found only through browse features though, right? Look at this shit. No one gives a fuck about searching this content through YouTube search engine. No one cares, man. The amount of views that I got through the YouTube search engine is 123 out of 4,000. And this is, I always like to bring this up to prove a point that you monkey is saying you need to put the episode title and the anime title in the title or else you're not going to get views because, because people can't see it in the search engine. You have no clue what the fuck you're talking about. You're genuinely delusional. If you're using the YouTube, if you're relying on the search engine as a reaction channel to grow, you've already fucking failed. Now, let's see something else. Mm, the, the blue lock news has been kind of popping off low key. Tower of God has been doing really bad though. Let's look at Tower of God. And why is Tower of God doing bad? Well, shit, people don't really give a fuck about this show. Look at the amount of likes it's getting, 154. You know, it's about 10%. I think that a good ratio of like viewers to like ratio is like roughly 10%. And if it's more tourists coming in, then someone like 5% might be good. But uh, 
power of God, even though it's the episodes are genuinely getting better. And I don't think I'm delusional. I think that the episodes are genuinely getting better as they are saving more, I guess, dedication and effort to the workshop battles. But, you know, 16% less viewers, blah, blah, blah. It, it, it's just a lack of interest. But what is interesting in these kind of videos is that even though it performs worse than the other shows like Index and Grief, you'll notice that the engagement is pretty damn fucking good. And why is that? Sometimes, well, actually most of the times, when the viewers go down, you're basically shedding the fat, and the people that's left that's actually watching are just hardcore enjoyers. Therefore, even if the views in this typical area should be from 1.9 to 3.1k, and we're kind of minus like 400 roughly, right? Minus 300 roughly, right? The watch time is fantastic. Because the quality of the audience watching this shit will watch the entire video because they're true Tower God fans and they're my fans of my Tower God content and they want to watch it through. So it's not the end of the world, honestly. It really isn't. This isn't enough for me to like drop a show. I think Tower God's going to be fine. We're going to watch throughout the workshop battle. It's just I wish that it had a better adaptation. It's sad that, you know, 8-Bit Studio, sorry, the Answer Studio has just ruined it. This video is interesting. Will you watch a certain scientific railgun next? So I'm always trying to figure out how do I make more videos? How do I just make content out of my ass? And usually what I do with these kind of polls, right? Is that, um, I, I, here, let's just watch the video. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Like, like this video is literally telling you that a poll is going to be made, right? And I'm, a hype, I'm hyping up my community. Railgun is most likely going to be next. And I'm basically just making a video, making a prediction of what's going to be winning. And people still watch it. And it's a short video, right? It's just a little update video. But I realized that I can also milk content like this where, you know, instead of just asking people what they want through a community poll series, right? And then polling, I can also make a video about that curated list of videos that we are polling and then to kind of further suggest that, hey, go to the fucking polls, go vote if you don't even know what polls are. Blue Lock is low-key popping off. Still, again, I don't get it. Blue Lock 2, 4,100 views. And it's not even like, I don't think that this episode was necessarily that even good either. Right? It... it, it, it I mean, the animation improved, and maybe people are shocked because, oh my god, things are actually fucking moving. And you'll notice that, yes, look at this. People do not give a fuck about this early part. Let's, what, what is this early part? Let's see. Okay, it's literally just Isagi and just, you know, the yeah, yeah, who gives a fuck about this moment, right? And most of the people watching this, I think, are tourists, most likely. Yeah, there's no, there's more new people coming in. The nice thing about Blue Lock is that there's like a, like a lot of new people coming in. I'm kind of low-key breaking into the sports audience. Look at the not sub to sub ratio, right? So whenever you have stuff like this and you have new people coming in, right? Even though the views are high, the watch time will be lower compared to, let's say, Strange Grief and Index, right? Index and Strange Grief, they also had roughly 4,000 viewers, yet it had 40 more hours despite it having like 200 less views, right? Because the quality of the viewers there is different. Blue lock shit, people just want to see the hype moments. It's a bunch of tourists coming in. It's perfectly fine. You don't you you want to always mix and match and try to adhere to your loyal community who are returning viewers, but also have content that exposes your content to a wider audience so that you don't just die off in like a little pond and you need to, you know, venture off to the wild, right? You need to expand your audience pool. And again, most people just finding my shit through the browse features because YouTube search engine does not matter. And look at that shit, bro. People find these videos through just searching my fucking name rather than, you know, blue lock reaction. What the fuck is this, bro? Skibbity total 77 par 4. You tell me I show up if people search this shit? What the fuck is happening, YouTube? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, this is kind of sad. This is pretty sad, actually. One second, one second. I got to do a bathroom break. Be right back.
All right, I'm back. So, why is Orb falling off relative to the pri previous episodes? Well, if we search by Orb and look at the viewership, from the beginning, Orb has been phenomenal. But what have I told you in the past videos? All these viewers are tourists. They are not my community members. They're just a bunch of random people from Japan seeking their favorite content. They have no idea what I'm even saying because they don't speak English. They just want to see my facial reaction. That's why the new viewer here is so high and we want to have that. This is a good thing. But it would be a... But it's not a good thing. Because it's fucking Japanese people showing in. And it's not that... Japanese people are bad. No, they're great. There's nothing wrong about Japanese people. But in the, in the context of content creation and trying to make people to community members, getting exposed to a non-English speaking audience, it's a waste of time. After Orb is done, they're not going to stick around, nor is there any point to put an effort to make them stick around. There's going to be less percentage of people who are actually English speaking that's going to stick around. Now, for some of the Japanese people that may be watching this and they understand English, I truly do appreciate you. But you need to understand that this is, it's, it, it, it looks good, but it's bad. I wish that, you know, more, it was more of like, you know, English speaking audience from here actually seeking this content out. But, you know, there's a lot of, uh, and it's, it's like the counter of a weeb, the opposite of a weeb where instead of Western people glazing Eastern culture, it's Eastern people glazing Western culture and seeking out orb content and the Western audience actually does not give a fuck about this. Let's look at, you know, this episode too, right? Obviously, this is just going to pop up because this is like, you know, the super plot twist episode, right? But notice this shit. Bro, the watch time is fucking dog shit. Right? Let me bring you, again, let me bring you an example where... Let's compare these two videos. And this is why understanding who your audience is is so important. We have two videos here. Ta you know, Index versus Orb. Actually, let's uh, bring this one up. Yeah, Index versus Orb. 11.3k views. This Orb video has nearly three times the viewership than Index video. But the watch time. Look at this shit. 670 hours. 338 hours. This shit's basically, it. despite it being three times less almost, it has pretty much double the watch time. Because the motherfuckers watching this don't actually care about my commentary and the reactions. They do not give a fuck. They only want to see specific moments and do not care about anything beyond that. And that's perfectly fine. You cannot expect your audience to stick around for these scenes. Especially if an audience that's not even community members that don't even fucking speak in... Oh, also, this is an opening reaction. <laughs> Terrible example! Let's take it back. No, no, no. I, I, I thought that this is the other example. My bad. My bad. Let's take it back. Let's seek Orb again. I was talking about the plot twist episode. This one. Let's take this episode. This, this, this one. My bad, my bad, my bad. This is kind of the same though, right? This is what I was trying to say. Look at this example. So this was the one that I was trying to bring up. Or... It is not three times, but it's two times the viewership, right? Yet the watch time, there is an insignificant difference, right? It's a hundred more watch time, despite it being two times more viewership. This was the example that I was trying to bring forth, right? And if we look at the engagement, yeah, this is the exact thing, right? No one cares about all the shit leading up to it. People only care about the actual like, oh my god, Raphael's gonna end himself. This is crazy, right? But that's what I'm talking about, right? And I don't blame you. When you when and you can never, like the most um stupid thing you can do is to get mad at this, because you will never like people are gonna watch what they want to watch, and I it's up to me to try my best to make the commentary as engaging as possible, such that during the moments that people don't really give a fuck, that people will still stick around and watch. And I think that I have proven that, where, you know, community shows, community series, people are going to watch pretty much everything that I say. But when you have new people coming in, a bunch of tourists, they only give a fuck about certain scenes. And on top of that, this audience is all just Japanese. And that's not a good thing. Like, what is your purpose? Every video needs to have an intention. What is your purpose with these videos? Well, my purpose was to try to farm out 
these videos to see if my community members liked it. But they didn't really like it. But it turns out there's a bigger audience out there that enjoyed it. Great. But what kind of audience is that? It's Japanese non-speaking English people that are most likely going to be even harder to turn into community members. That's why Orb is low-key a failed project, even though it's getting the views. And even if it's getting the views, let's look at this shit. People don't care anymore. Right? After episode 3, the plot twist, Orb is low-key going to get dropped at this rate. No one gives a fuck about this. Don't tell me that you love Orb and that people, you know, don't know what they're missing out. Because, like, listen, you may love Orb, but for the most part, motherfuckers don't care. My, this, this is when there is no Japanese audience, right? That's actually sad. This is actually still a little bit of Japanese audience. This is the true viewership of Orb. When there aren't crazy plot twists happening, when, when you're beyond that first hype, you know, um, what's the word? The uh, honeymoon phase, where in the beginning, everything is fine. But what is the true viewership when things get quote unquote boring or it's beyond the super exciting part? That's what I define as the floor. And if the floor cannot even get into this shit, and the, the saddest thing is, I showed you the Tower of God video, right? I showed you that Tower of God video, right? Let's compare these two videos. Both videos are fucking failing. But despite both videos failing, and this one is 880 less than usual, right? This one is 311 less than usual by this point. You can see that the quality of the audience that I have watching Tower of God are my community members that actually care about the entire content. They will watch the entire thing. There's no reason to drop Tower of God. But for Orb, it's different. These dudes are not... It's not really my community members, and even if they are, they just don't give a fuck about it. Orb is low-key gonna get dropped at this rate. It sucks because this show is pretty good. I'll probably give it one more episode, but if we have another back-to-back -back event like this happening, it's gonna get dropped and I'll probably just watch it myself. But this is a great example. This is a great example of... Two, sh two videos where the viewership is tanking, yet the quality of the audience is different. And... I think, again, the most important thing is to understand who is watching it, right? Most reaction channels, they just see a number. They think that's that. No, you have to understand who are watching it that got you that number. Things, even though the viewers are down, a different type of, you know, audience can change the watch time and make one show viable, but the other not, you know? It, it's such a stark difference between Power of God and Orb. But it's a pretty good example, and it's good, it makes, you know, good uh, case studies of what's going to happen. Could I keep it up on Patreon? Why would I do that? Just for you? You can vote it in as a Patreon exclusive if you want to watch it. But the time spent recording Orb is still time spent during a stream. That section could have been another assassination classroom, another index, another thing that people actually want to see. There is no point to make failing weekly series into Patreon exclusive. There's no point. Motherfuckers don't even want that shit. Why would I put it on Patreon? Some people on Patreon might want it, but I guarantee you, majority of the people on Patreon don't want it either. And if that's the case, vote it. Make it win. After Chunibyo, make Orb win. But I guarantee you, you won't even comment Orb the next time Patreon exclusive polls come in. I've had this shit happen over and over again. You may want it now, but you're going to forget in a week or two. Don't fucking lie to me. Now, Mao 2099 is, um, it's doing okay. Mao 2099 is doing okay. Let's check it out. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It's definitely not popping off, but it's barely hanging on. And it's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. Every video doesn't need to be exceptional. As long as we're hitting this range, the watch time is good. Again, right? Look at the watch time. Even though the views are kind of on the lower end, the watch time is fine because the quality of the audience watching this, this is purely community effort. People are seeking out my content from my audience, right? No new people coming in. Pretty much just a almost 60-40 split, right? So these audiences, it's all my boys and girls. And they're... I can't, can I even say girls? It's all my boys, sorry. I can't say girls here. <laughs> Let's look at the revenue. 282. Sounds about right. RPM for that. Mao 2099, I think, is the uh, perfect example of just an average show. It's just an average show, th not average in terms of like how good the anime is, but average in terms of performance and 
that my community members are watching it. If it's perfectly fine. It's it's our bread and butter. Perfectly fine. Now, let's look at the healer got banished. This is an interesting one. It's obviously underperforming. And the watch time is barely holding on. This is definitely on the chopping block, right? It definitely is on the chopping block. I don't think we need to necessarily drop it. It's still relatively fun to watch, but again, right? Almost like 60-40 split. It's just all my audience watching it. Mm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it, but I don't think that this is really the main target to drop. You know what the new target to drop is? Someone's about to get banned. Rule number one, don't fucking ask. Rule number two, if anyone answers, both of you get banned. Just sit back and watch the fucking stream. Uh, what was I saying? I was looking for a specific uh, weekly series. I was, I think I was looking for Daima. Yeah, look at this one. 772, right? Like, Dragon Ball Daima is the worst performing series of all fucking time right now. Nobody gives a shit about this. Bro. I'm gonna just drop this. I'm not even gonna watch the next episode. There is no point to watch this. Dragon Ball Daima is a terrible fucking anime. Not because it looks bad. Not because the voice acting or the- it, it looks stunning. The visuals are stunning. But this shit's just slice of life Dragon Ball. Ain't nobody fucking watch Dragon Ball for slice of life. They're taking their sweet ass- the, the, the pacing is so, so ass. Nothing is happening. It's getting carried by, you know, the Dragon Ball name. This shit is ass, and it's not even for my own channel either. Like, everyone else is, like, shown in battle channels too. Daima is fucking dead on arrival. Ain't nobody give a fuck. I am done watching this shit. On a different topping of why can't he ask. So, let's bring this back. A new viewer showed up saying, did he watch ReZero? And I said... If anyone answers, both of you will be banned. The reason that this rule exists, and why can't he ask? He can ask. I don't expect new people to understand. It's for you to, it's a learning experience. But if there's anyone around that actually answers, then that's a fucking L for you, because you should know by now. Why can't you ask what the schedule is? Because the more you cater towards these fucking tourists that only wants to see one specific section of the stream, like, what are you doing? You're bowing down to the fucking audience. They don't care about you. They only care about that specific content. They're literal fucking tourists. I will never cater toward tourists. The only thing that matters is my community members. And for people to watch me, I stream for the stream rather than one specific section. The more I give you a schedule, the more I tell you when that thing's going to happen, you're only going to tune in for that specific section and not watch the rest of the stream. That creates a terrible fucking culture of people, just vultures, just showing up for one specific part and falling off. I am not about that. The reason why my average viewership on Twitch is higher than most other people that has way more subs than me. First of all, it's because I started early. Most motherfuckers got huge and then they started streaming and it's hard to bring up a, starting, a streaming audience like that. But another thing is I am able to round up and unite my monkeys better than most people because I don't bow down and lick the fucking boots of tourists. I make sure that you watch me for me and you stick around for the stream to watch everything rather than one specific section. Now, is that possible for every person? No, of course not. Most people are still going to be tuning into specific parts and that's why whenever ReZero happens, there's going to be a huge influx of people. But the more you cater towards that audience and the more you try to cater towards a tourist, they're not, it, it's a fucking, it's, it, they're not treating your stream with respect, right? So that's the whole idea. The streaming culture in my brand is such that I will never give you a schedule. You can stick around and watch the entire stream and tune in for this part you want, or you can just fuck off and try to time it of when I'm, you know, watching that specific thing. No harsh feelings, but just the same way that you are looking for this specific part, I will never give you that part. You can basically just watch the whole thing or fuck off. It doesn't make any difference to me. And Daima, I think Daima's dead. Like, come on. There's, there's no point watching Daima, right? Daima is just so fucking bad, man. And the thing about Daima, I bet there's going to be a moment in the future where Dragon Ball has like a crazy moment. I don't know how many episodes there are, probably 20-something. But like the pacing is so bad, but I bet there will be a moment where it goes viral. But simply sticking on to a failing show that my audience don't even care about, 
in hopes of that one episode, if that even happens, it's fucking stupid. I would much rather use this slot for a community series, something that my audience actually wants to watch. Next up. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Dandadan went pretty hard. Let's look at Don, uh, let, let's look at um three shows here. Let's look at Dandadan. Let's look at Danmachi. And let's look at Assassination Classroom. Because Assassination Classroom obviously is a community series that's you know doing really well. And the most recent and, and this specific episode, it's a pop-off episode, right? It's a priority episode. And then I want to compare Dandaran and Danmachi, which are weekly shows that may not have the same type of audience. So let's look at the viewership difference. The community series has 4.7 views. The trending weekly shit is 5.3. And Dandaran obviously is 6.4, right? The watch time, let's look at that. 1.1k on Dandaran. 806 on here. 821 here. I think that rather than comparing Dandaran and Damachi, or Dandaran and Assassination Classroom, a better comparison might be this and this. Because again, more views compared to Assassination Classroom, but the quality of the audience watching this obviously way higher, because more watch time versus this. And not only that, it's a 42 minute video. It's a 42 minute video versus a 28 minute video. I think that speaks volumes. I think this is another example where, again, think about the type of audience that's watching it. What kind of content is this? Is this a content for your existing audience or is this a content for a completely new audience? If I look at the audience tab, is it? It's a 55 to 44% split for not sub to sub. If we look at the audience split here at Assassination Classroom, it's 50 50 across four, right? So you can clearly tell that there's more tourists, more under other people that's not really my community watching this shit because things went, you know, viral. Obviously, it was like a key priority episode. And if we look at it, yep. These sluts only want to see one single part. Now, for Assassination Classroom, I bet that the back end is definitely going to be higher too because, you know, it was a pop-off moment. So, yes. But you can clearly tell that people only cared about this part for the 40-minute video. But in Assassination Classroom, the, the priority episode, the community show... People cared about the whole thing, right? This is quality audience. This is just quantity of audience. These are just tourists, non-community members that only cares about the plot twist. And for sure, right? It was a very fun moment. It was a very fun moment. Are you seer? You were never seer, but I've seen seer and Freya in the sea. Anyways, I, I just go through a schizo fucking a uh, couple minutes, just like laughing my ass off at the plot twist. It's a pretty good uh, comparison, though. Again. Not every view is the same. Think about the audience you have. If you look at the revenue breakdown, 342 for that. If you look at the revenue breakdown for Assassination Classroom, 408, fantastic. More people watching throughout. Now let's look at this. Dandaran. Dandaran, I think, uh... Tourists? Yeah. Kind of similar to Damachi. More tourists for sure. But I think that um, because the episode, the entire episode popped off, it's way more stable, right? So think about it. Damachi, the entire episode didn't necessarily pop off. It was pretty much just this ending part. But Dandaran, the entire episode was just fucking peak cinema. That's why even though you have, you know, a sub split that shows that there's more tourists rather than your community members, it still has a lot more watch time, despite it being like a 26 minute video, right? Compared to a 42 minute video, because again, people just simply watch it for a longer time. And if people watch it for a longer time, you're naturally gonna make more fucking money. Look at this shit. There's not that much difference in the viewership here, right? It's like a difference of like 1,000, but $17 versus 22. Maybe it's not that crazy difference. But again, if you look at the revenue, like 342 versus 358, it's actually not that high. Interesting. That's very interesting, where you have way more watch time here, right? 806 versus 1.1k, but the RPM isn't that significant. But for here, it's 408 because I guess, why? The demographic watching this shit. I'm always trying to figure out, like, how this RPM calculation, you know, makes sense. But I think Dandaran having a lower RPM here kind of does make sense. Despite it being more views because it's like a shorter video. I don't know. I love Dandaran though. I'm glad it's doing well. And Damachi, I'm also glad that it can show up, right? I'm just, I was worried that even during like crazy episode that maybe Damachi didn't 
have the audience anymore. It's just an old show that people forgot about, but people showed up for this, so I'm very glad about that. A very a fun thing about this one, too. Um, so I want to show you something different here where, um, thumbnail difference. Does this show here? Reach. Yeah. So thumbnail test. So this is a feature where when you upload a new video, maybe we can kind of like, uh, do like a sample test here. Maybe we'll go to the uh, second channel. Actually, we can just do it here. Why not? So basically, when you upload a video, right? I'm just going to upload just a random video. When you upload a video, you have this option in the thumbnail part. Basically, you can search for a thumbnail, right? And you can have a thumbnail show up. Or you can also have to test and compare. So. YouTube did roll out this. It's not really new. It's pretty old. It's, it's been it's, it's been like a couple months, I think. But I didn't really use it until recently where you can choose like three separate thumbnails. You know, you can choose that one and you can choose this one and you can choose this one. And when the video gets published based on their machine learning algorithm and how they think a specific audience would enjoy a specific thumbnail, they'll kind of test it around. They'll test it around. Not like you may see thumbnail A, but someone else may see thumbnail B and someone else may see, see thumbnail C, kind of like that. And after testing, let's uh, discard this actually. I don't need to upload this video actually. And after testing on Dan Dan, because I, I, I didn't really like this thumbnail. The, the red one was a bit too dark. And I thought that Momo's face was very funny. It's more colorful and my thought process was, I think that the Momo thumbnail will pop off better, but the overall episode was Okarun and kind of just running around, but the colors are dark. When you're making a thumbnail, the most important thing I think is simplicity and how vibrant the colors are. Bright backgrounds with blue colors, green shit, right? I think is good. Complete red saturation. It's not as just like, um, you're not really drawn to it immediately. It might even be intimidating. And you can see that, you know, there's a 54.3% actually watched it more than 44 or 45%, right? Look at this shit. Test finished. They ran from 26th of October from 2 a.m. till, you know, basically one day. This is like one day of testing different thumbnails. And YouTube has decided that, you know, how is the winning thumbnail selected? Let's look at this. The winning thumbnail generated the high share of videos watch time. So its goal is to see which thumbnail makes an audience watch for a longer time. I don't think it's necessarily due to the thumbnail that the audience is watching for a longer time, but that thumbnail may attract a more loyal audience or a more sweaty audience than like a tourist. I think that's the idea. And again, the quality of the audience will determine how much they really watch it for a longer time, right? Why is watch time share used? Great thumbnails don't give just viewers to click. They also help viewers to understand what the video is about so they can make informed decisions on what to watch. By selecting based on watch time share, the winning thumbnail is the one that gets viewers both to click and to stay to watch. Additionally, YouTube search discovery systems considers both on ranking videos. Choosing thumbnails based on watch time share will benefit you and your viewers. So it was a good test. And my, my um, guess was also correct. I knew that the, I, I was hoping that, you know, the more, Meme face of Momo with, you know, a lighter color would do better than Okarun in epic mode. And there it is. It's pretty cool though, huh? Is there anything else I want to check out? Oh, there is uh, one more. Uh, let's check a couple more things. Let's check out the ReZero episode, right? Let's, let's check out ReZero. Let's see, let's see, let's see. ReZero, ReZero, ReZero. Where you at? Here it is. Emilia, are you a virgin? ReZero is still getting the highest viewership out of all because, I mean, there is just, it just makes sense, right? We've done so much ReZero prep. The audience aligns with ReZero. It's such a huge name and it's trending. It is like the perfect storm to, you know, have shit pop off. Watch time is fantastic. Let's see the view attention. Fantastic. Through 41 minutes, people stick around on the higher end throughout the entire video. Absolutely amazing. Let's look at the um, watch time, right? Good, good, good. The reach people again find it through browse features mostly. And the people search for my name. <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. And so 
when I, I think what's more important than saying ReZero Season 3 Episode 4 reaction, what's more important in the search engine I think is more key moments where people might think is more viral. Emilia Are You a Virgin is such a thing that people will search for, right? So with that presence of mind, I decided to add that onto the video. Not only when you get recommended, it's clickable. I thought that people might actually search that too. Because like when you type ReZero episode, you know, season three, episode four, you, you have no clue how many fucking people are typing that same shit, right? It gets saturated. You just get buried under. So you gotta kind of think about like, how can you kind of play outside the pack? How do you separate yourself from the whole pack of people doing the same shit, right? And that's kind of the idea of doing it. Let's look at the... Oh, we already checked out the engagement. Uh, let's look at the audience. There's some new people coming in. That's always good to see. 0.3% female. <laughs> Amazing. A clean 50-50 split. And this truly makes me happy that a community series, right? Reason pretty much right now is still a community series. The fact that we're getting a 50-50 split means that we're not getting carried by tourists. The fact that there's like little to no... It's all returning viewers here, right? and no, you know, little to no new viewers compared to Orb, I am earning these views. These views are all through my community. Even if it's a trending weekly content, it is doing really well. Let's look at the revenue. $4.44. God fucking damn, baby. Love to see that shit, right? We don't want to be in the $2 range. I want to try to push for 3 to $4 range. ReZero. Fantastic, what can I say? Um, and finally, I think we should check out this one. Also, ah! Uh, some of these more clickbaity titles, like, you know, Super's Crest Trusting Hobby, right? It, it actually gets quite a decent amount of views, but, um... I think that, uh, let's look at two things. It's funny that, uh, solo leveling still gets this many viewers, man. Like, like, this trailer is straight up wasn't even, like... It's not even a thing, but I think what's important is to... So let's look at this, right? Let's look at the breakdown of viewership. So, so far, every video pretty much has been through recommendations and browse features, right? But this one, quite a significant amount is actually from the YouTube search engine, right? Look at the percentage and look at the viewership. Why is that? Because it's a trailer. Trailers and opening shit, I will probably put in the title, you know, the actual thing. In my usual videos that I, the reactions, I, I don't do that. But... For very specific content, like trailer reactions or opening reactions, it is actually worth to put this in to kind of hit the YouTube search engine, right? That's kind of the the mindset for that one. Uh, let's look at the... Hold up. Let's look at the audience. A little bit new people coming in. That's good to see. 57 point... It's almost like a 60-40 split. It's not too bad of, you know... A lot of Indian people love it. More Indian people love soul leveling than United States. Okay, I see. That's interesting. Soul leveling was basically like like each season. There's like a show that really pops up in my channel. In January, it was solo leveling. Honestly, it wasn't really solo leveling. Solo leveling was doing really well, but villainous ninety nine, wrong way to use healing magic and instant death were also like getting like ten k views, which was fucking crazy back then. Which was like you know ten months ago. That shit was crazy, man. But it's it's good signs. It's good signals that you know people are still interested in solo leveling topic. We're going into winter twenty twenty five very soon, and solo leveling will be there in prevalence. So good to see. And finally, the last video I want to check out is this one. Seventeen k views. The final video. Seventeen thousand. God damn, baby. God damn, baby. What happened? Well, think about it. Why did this video get so many views? And I doubt it's through the YouTube search engine that much either, right? No, look at it. Look at the breakdown of viewership. Only 8.4 came from YouTube search engine compared to the solo leveling I just showed you, right? This is insignificant. Most of it through the recommendations. Why would it get shared this much? And you'll notice also too that during these kind of videos, they don't watch throughout the whole thing, but it's fine. Even if they don't watch the whole fucking video, you will still get promoted on lot. Um, and, and viewed because this is a sensitive topic that is trending through a lot of people people blue lock is a huge title people love blue lock and there's also a lot of shitty things happening with blue lock right now 
and I happen to make a video talking about why the shitty things are happening. It's a very wide appealing topic. And I didn't think it would necessarily go quote unquote viral, but it low key did. And the best part about this is this, look at that. So far, aside from Orb, there has been, and even Orb, I don't think it was really able to surpass the returning viewers count. But look at the blue line and the purple line, right? So far, blue line has always been flat because it's all returning viewers and existing audiences. Videos like this, basically it's called like evergreen content where you're trying to make a wide appealing video to a completely new audience. And even though, you know, my audience will definitely stick around and watch that. Like, look at that. 83.8% not sub to subscribe. This is an amazing thing to happen. You want this shit to happen. Mostly from the United States as well. Look at the revenue. What's the RPM here? 329. It makes sense because even though there's so many people watching it, right? There's not that much watch time because people obviously don't watch it for a long time. But still, it, it's pretty significant. I, it, it's, it's cool that this video went viral. So what did we learn today? I, I think that uh, we'll wrap up the performance review. But um, I think, again, the key emphasis on videos like this is to understand that every number, every click, every view is not the same. We've gone over examples where, you know, a community series that competes in the same level of viewership with like a trending weekly series does not have the same quality because there's more watch time here since there's more loyal people watching me for me rather than people watching this for Strange Grief. Um, there's some other things on the exact opposite end of the spectrum where low performing series at the same time due to the quality of the audience that's sticking around to actually watch the entire thing versus a fraudulent audience, right? You, you, things are more viable even though it, the views are low. Perfectly fine. Blue Lock pops the fuck off as well. Reezer is always doing well. Down to down, I showed you the ABC, you know, thumbnail testing. Dragon Ball Daima is gonna get dropped. It's unfortunate, but honestly, I don't really think it's unfortunate because most of you motherfuckers don't even care about it. And the Blue Lock example, we low key went viral. It's nice to see that within a week that we can, you know, reach almost 20k views. There are definitely a lot of videos that, you know, are over 10k views, but it takes a lot of time. You know, it, it, it's, it's gonna take many, many months to kind of build up to this level. But the fact that this kind of got on this list seven days ago with a lot of other videos, you know, being many, 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 many months, it, it, it's really cool to see. And right now, maybe uh, I wanna show you this actually. Hold up. I mean, let me bring on a separate chart. Arifreta does decent enough. Arifreta just does average. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Content, just a bit. Yeah. I want to bring you this thing. So we are in a very interesting uh, situation. Let me bring this up. And I'm going to use Microsoft Paint and bring you this. So let's try to see what's happening. So what you're seeing here is the overall analytics for in viewership, right? For the uh, lifetime. If you can't see that, it's, it's lifetime. Basically, the conception of this channel until now. And there has been definitely key moments. I've talked to you guys about these quote unquote Zenkai boosts where in roughly three month periods, you know, things will pop off. So again, this is when Eminence and Shadow finale happened, right? The video that is the most popular right now on my channel. I got bailed out, got 72k views. But virality does not mean shit at the end of the day. Virality, if you don't know what to do with the incoming audience, your channel will die off immediately, right? And nothing really changes here until a certain period. Then there is a slight shift here. You can't really tell because it's so fucking low, but there, there is a gradual shift in the way that the videos are being done, right? This compared to this, there, there is a roughly changing part. And this is when I stopped doing covering so many weekly series, just doing, a actually asking what my audience wants, like trying to understand. Again, a lot of people just don't even know what their audience wants. Just fucking talk to them, just, just ask them, right? And then ever since then, in three month periods, there has been uh, moments of tremendous growth seemingly overnight. And there's a spike here, and then there's like a new average here, you know, the three month run, and then an overnight spike again. And, it's, and again, it's not due to one single video um, carrying either. It's due to the entire channel being pushed out by the algorithm. It's almost like the floodgates being lifted. And let's talk about this area. So 
I want to explain to you that, uh, I'm not completely sure yet, but basically October this month, I believe a Zenkai boost kind of did happen again, but not really in the way that I imagined. So again, the Zenkai boosts, I call them that because of Dragon Ball stuff, but overnight there, there is this kind of like overnight spike. There is this like spike. There is this spike in three month intervals. And there's kind of a spike here. It's more like this, right? And it kind of, I'm not really sure. Thank you, Unholy Grail, for that gifted tier two sub, man. I appreciate that. But um, you'll notice that this one is not really the same, right? This new spike, I'm not completely sure if this is a spike because if we look at the overall line, right? We have like, like, like we have reached um a high as this before. And this high is about the same, right? It, it, it's about the same. It's not like a 2x thing. But what you don't really see here is the fact that when this spike happened, this was basically the difference of me averaging around 700 to 800,000 views per month to now 1.3 million views per month. It's not completely 2x, but it's, it's, it's a significant boost. And at that point, that was when I realized that like, yo, like YouTube is actually paying me a decent amount of money where I can pay the bills. And this was during, you know, basically the last three months of just covering ReZero. This is when I really went crazy for ReZero. Because right now I'm only uploading, and I say only because that's funny because I'm uploading so many fucking videos, but eight videos a day spaced out in three hour intervals. Back during this period, I was uploading like more than 10 videos a day. Because I was so fucking obsessed with not letting this fire die down. I put in way more fucking work than I've ever done before. And just pumped so much shit. But eventually, things obviously, you know, you can't just, you know, always maintain this hype. So, what I'm trying to tell you is, due to the amount of sheer volume I pumped out, compared to now, right? Because again, this is like, we're doing like eight videos a month, uh, a day right now. This shit is like literally more than 10 a day. Plus, not only 10 videos, not only that, but this period is when ReZero was also popping off too. Like the most priority episodes, we're doing like a ReZero marathon from season one to season two, right? Everything is being covered. Of course, the channel is going to be on fire. And what I'm trying to tell you is because of all these different situations that made this stage so good, this new Zenkai boost doesn't seem as good compared to the previous examples. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is there is little to no difference in content creation outputs in these phases. And that's why there is such a stable increment. But this most recent iteration, the Zenkai boost low key looks fraudulent because this kind of, you know, aligns with this. But I think this area is something you should be more aware about. I, I think around this area is when I started to kind of just be like, you know what? This is actually too much. It's a bit unsustainable. Like I'm burning myself out trying to pump out too much fucking content. I need to kind of like take a step back and, and do something that works for me. And, I, and I've noticed that like rather than trying to upload a video every fucking two hours, three hours is a sweet spot, eight videos per day, right? And now I think we did hit a new Zenkai boost. And despite putting out less content than this area, it's still able to rival, if not do more than these, this hot area due to this new spike. Does that make sense? Type one in chat if you understood what I said. Type two if you don't. Am I making sense? Should I try to make this like more simple, right? And maybe I'm coping. And low key, I hope that I am coping because I don't want the new Zenkai boost to just, you know, be here for the next three months you know it's nice it's it's definitely nice but like you know i low-key want like a new fucking boost where like it just shoots up here and then you know we got a new baseline like a new baseline there i, I don't think that's gonna happen that, that's being way too fucking greedy but that's kind of what's happening right now in roughly three month intervals this this always happens right and due to the amount sheer amount of content that i was pumping out here you know this that may not seem as significant, but what you need to know is that this new average is actually quite significant. 
because there's less content being pumped out compared to this area, yet we're able to get the same kind of viewership. Anyways, that's it from me. See you next time.